Randall Parkway here in Wilmington, heading across town, going toward uptown. Going to replace that fan motor I found bad on a train heat pump the other day. Needed an A25 RPM motor, I didn't have one, so I went down to our local Johnstone and got a replacement for it, along with a 2.9 amp half horsepower one for my trailer on Friday to switch out. So stick around for the fun of a condenser fan motor changeout, baby. Goes for the bedrooms. 2002. She's an old bird. Got to change the condenser fan motor. It's it's done for. So we can't give her a spin real quick. And I'll show you. Oh no. Where's my extension? This might work. Yeah. There you go. She's not really working off we have no power so I can take the rest of these screws these screws off around the top there's a little notch the wires come through in between the top panel and this back panel where the controls are uh, you see there's power to the low voltage I can stay on while I'm doing this and this motor has been changed once already because they've mated those together I think it's a rescue motor in there now but this one is a US Motors brand same difference who cares let's get her in there should uh, spin around pretty freely. Several revolutions just keep going and going and going and slowly slow down. But we're not even getting one revolution, we're getting like a third of one. So, wires are put into this channel. It's supposed to be tucked underneath here, that's fine. But we tuck it in there, go through this little buffer right here, and they spliced them on to these. We'll see if we can't make our leads reach. I don't know if they will or not. We'll see. Make sure I don't lose these. I tend to, unfortunately. We're right down here at the end of the set, so hopefully it comes right off. Yay! Sure, what that is looks like some kind of plan or something. Interesting. Take the brown lead, comes off of the capacitor. Purple lead is coming off the left side of the contactor, which would be our run side. And our black lead is going to come off of the defrost control board. And there we are. That's our channel. Let's see. Motor specs on this one, quarter horsepower, 825, 1.9 amp. So, that thing is locked up. You can barely turn it without the blade on. Alright, I'm going to flip it over and get this motor off, and we can screw the new motor down. Right here, it's a, one of those multi horse motors. Wires. You can wire the two leads, the browns, to a capacitor, or you can just use the brown and white lead. Or use the brown lead. So we'll see what we're going to do. Just a multi horsepower motor. Got our black, it's common. Got our white, and it's run. And then we have our two wires that go to the capacitor. Now we can, there's one that's striped white. Let me see. There it is. Got a white stripe on it. That's the same as the white. 
they basically go into the same location so we can use the brown as our start and abandon the other one since it takes a five microfarad capacitor and that's basically what I have in there right now so I can use that same capacitor because it's uh, practically brand new I think I changed it either last year or the year before well for Chinese capacitors that might be like 20 years old but it's newer extra washers on these I tightened them down because there is a little bit, there's a little bit of evidence of cracking, especially around this one and here. I want to make sure that I widen that little impact area up a little bit, so it's not rocking right on those tiny nuts. It's going to actually put a little bit more of an equal force across a little bit larger area. Hopefully, that will make it last until its end of days. Also, don't forget to take out the drain plug on the downward facing side of your motor so your motor will last more than a few weeks. <laughs> so I'm going to put this thing back up here and put the blade on it. I to scare those wires out of the way. It rotates freely except for where it slaps the wires. We'll get that put together right there. Put a piece of... Although that motor is a little bit taller. You can raise it up just a little bit more. I didn't notice that a second ago. That motor is a little bit taller. So we can go up about right here. What it looks like. Let's do that. Looks a little bit more right. That's right about there. A little bit more clearance that way. I'll go grab some PVC and we'll make a little screen for those reversing leads. Hopefully I calculated that correctly. Probably not. Put some ties on the PVC holding the reversing wires and then our little track that goes across here. I put some ties on it as well because this thing's kind of loose anyway right here and kind of kind of dicey. So we're going to put some zip ties on it. Redneck it up. I'm going to flip this over and hook up these leads inside of here on the, in the control cabinet and we'll start her up and see how she's doing. Guys, we have our motor installed. Dressed up the wires going across here. Splice onto them our white common wires going to the contactor where it gets a jumper over to the run part of the dual run capacitor. Our black comes off the contactor, goes to the defrost board, and then onto the fan motor as the common, the motor common, and our brown wire. What the brown and white's cut off, but the brown wire extends over to the capacitor to the fan terminal for the start winding. So let's fire it up. We'll see how many amps we have on it. Get something to press the contactor down with. I don't like touching it. I'm not gonna die. Let's see. Here we are. Make sure we're spinning the right way too. We're below amps required. Good. Let's see what we do. Spinning counterclockwise. Yes, of course it's backwards. Because I did it again. I don't know why. Okay. 
test run here. We're going to start up the fan. Right at 2 amps. Fan's rated at 2 amps, so we're right on the money. Getting the airflow out of the top. Oh, happy day. Oh, yippee doo die day. 1.92 on the motor, so the motor is good. The ambient is 65 degrees, so a little chilly for charging a TXV. Our low side is 28 degrees saturation. We have 51 degree line, so we have about 20 degrees, 22 degrees of superheat, which isn't too far off where we'd expect it, even if it's a little bit cool out today. 138 on the high side, which isn't very high. 77 degree saturation. 67 on the line coming back, so we have about 10 degrees of subcooling, which is right where we need to be. And since we are 65 outside today, we'd actually expect a little bit higher head pressure, but since we're below the temperature we're supposed to be checking charge, I'm gonna let it slide because everything else looks pretty, pretty much intact. So we're, of course we're operating below freezing because it's pretty cold inside and it's pretty cool outside. So. We're doing all we can do just to uh, get those subcooling and superheat numbers close to correct. So I'm gonna let this thing roll. The old boy lasts another day. Old shaker. See you guys on the next one.